Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to look at the three monetary policy tools that the Fed uses to control the money supply. And there are, one of them is kind of a day-to-day -day tool, one of them is sort of a, a middle-term tool, and one of them is one that they don't change very much at all. But we're, we're going to look at all three of them. And what we're going to see in each case is we're going to look to see precisely, or uh, probably not so much precisely, but kind of generally how uh, the mechanism, how they uh, change the money supply. Now, in order to understand this, one of the things that I want, uh, I'm going to keep referring back to is the reserves, the bank reserves that uh, banks hold. So let's remember that banks have two kinds of reserves, and we're going to kind of look at it as a, maybe a bar graph, okay? That there is the required reserve, and that is the money that banks are, are required to keep and not lend out, right? Oops, required reserves. The money that they're not allowed to, spend, to lend out. And then if they have any money left over, remember that this is a, a percentage of their deposits, okay? Uh, based on the reserve ratio. And any money that they have that is not lent out, we call that uh, excess reserves. So money that is not lent out but is also above the required reserves is called excess reserves. And so what we're going to see is that uh, what the Fed will do is they will uh, basically put money into banks or take money out of banks and affect their excess reserves and affect the required reserves that will lead to um, money creation or money destruction. Remember that the money creation process is a chain reaction that results in an increase in the money supply and the money destruction process is a chain reaction that re results in a decrease in the money supply. Okay, so uh, money creation leads to an increase in the money supply and money destruction Lead, is the chain reaction that leads to a decrease in the money supply. And then what we just learned for, about uh, in the money market is that when there's an increase or a decrease in the money supply, there's then a change in the interest rates in, in a market, okay? All right, the last thing that I need to explain to you before we jump into monetary policy tools is I need to explain a concept to you called the monetary base. Now, the monetary base is all of the actual official money that is sponsored by the Federal Reserve. It's basically all of the physical money that, uh, that the Fed creates. Uh, this is not the money that is created through the money creation process. Okay? This is official money that is created and, uh, and sponsored by and uh, in, like put into the economy by the Fed itself, okay? So let me give you a uh, definition for the monetary base. The monetary base is the portion of the money supply that includes only currency and bank reserves. All right, so now, what is not included in the monetary base? The monetary base does not include electronic or digital money from the money creation process. Um, now, here's basically what happens. Is, so the monetary base is what the Fed has direct control over. When the Fed directly changes the monetary base, they indirectly affect the electronic and digital money from the money creation process. So the Fed has direct control over the monetary base and indirect, so Fed has direct control over the monetary base, but this uh, the, money, the money that's created from the money creation process, uh, Fed indirectly 
affects that money. See, here's the thing with this, with this money from the money creation process. It relies on banks loaning out the money that they have in reserve. If banks decide not to lend their money out, this money creation process is going to be stunted. It also requires people to want to borrow money from banks. If people decide they don't want to borrow because they lack confidence in the economy, then this is not going to happen. The Fed can do whatever they want with the monetary base, but they can't force people to borrow money. And for the most part, they can't force banks to lend out money. All of that stuff is going to be affected by market dynamics. Okay, And so um, the Fed, though it may appear as though the Fed has a lot of control over what happens monetarily in the economy, they do rely on the interests of people in the economy to, uh, to cause this money creation process to increase the money supply. Okay. All right, so here's the deal. Typically what happens is increasing the monetary base will trigger the money creation process and increase the money supply. And so what you're going to see in a lot of the stuff that, we, that, that I do in here when I go over the monetary policy tools is uh, all of the, well, two of the three of them um, are, affect the monetary base. And what you'll see is increase in the monetary base leads to an increase in the money supply. So two of the three monetary policy tools end with this dynamic. Uh, an increase in monetary base leads to an increase in money supply. Or... The opposite dynamic, which is decreasing the monetary base, will trigger the money destruction process, which leads to a decrease in the money supply. And so you will see the dynamic where a decrease in the monetary base will then lead to a decrease in the money supply. Now, this dynamic here is assuming that people do what we expect them to do and the chain reaction of money creation or money destruction actually occurs. Now, if you need to review the money creation process and the money destruction process from the previous lesson, I recommend that you go ahead and do that because it's very important that you have fresh in your mind this process of the chain reaction of lending and spending and depositing in money creation or the opposite in money destruction so that you can better understand how the Fed is influencing the money supply through their monetary policy tools. Okay. All right, so let's go ahead and get started with the first one, open market operations. All right, open market operations, this is something that the Fed does almost every day. The basic idea with open market operations is that the Fed is buying and selling government securities. What is a government security? Well, let's get to that in just a couple minutes. First, I want to give you a definition for open market operations. Open market operations is the buying and selling of government securities by the central bank as a way to control changes in the money supply. Okay, so what is a government security? Well, I'm glad you asked. Government security is basically a debt instrument. When I say debt instrument, I mean like basically a loan. It's called a bond, okay? Or that's one example of a, of a loan instrument. The idea is that people buy bonds uh, essentially, they're making a loan. So let's say that I purchase, okay, a $1,000 bond, okay? Now, I am going, so I'm the owner of the bond. I no longer have the money. I've given the money over to the person who sold me the bond. 
I now own the bond and I don't have the money. And what, the bo- what happens with this bond is it's a loan. And because it's a loan, I am going to be paid interest. So the federal government basically is going to be paying me interest. Why? Because it's a government bond. So the government is going to pay me interest. That interest is now a part of my income. Now, you may remember that we talked about government securities uh, and bonds and that sort of thing back when we talked about fiscal policy, right? We talked about how, uh, how does the Fe- uh, excuse me, how does Congress finance uh, a budget deficit? How do they finance the national debt? It's through the selling of government securities. So you can see here that uh, the Federal Reserve plays a role in the national debt by being the organization that buys and sells the bonds to people who loan the government money. Okay, And so uh, this is an important thing for the economy because not only are we able to finance the national debt, but the people who hold the bonds are receiving income from the federal government and that's an important investment option. So a government security, the definition I have for you, a government security is a marketable debt instrument. Of the U.S. Treasury. Like a bond. Or such as a bond. Okay, such as a bond. Okay, all right. So, what the Fed does now? What the Fed is doing is is every single day that they are open, they are actively buying and selling government securities, and they do this through banks. Now, if you want to have a really good understanding of open market operations, you're only going to get a general overview in this principles class. But if you want a very solid understanding, you might want to consider taking a class like money and banking or a class that covers very specifically central banking or the Federal Reserve. Okay, Uh, but we're just going to do a general overview. So this open market operations, uh, I want to note that there are two actions that the Fed can take. They can buy and they can sell. So I'm going to put that over here. One of the things that the Fed will do, I'm going to draw a line here, and on the left side, I'm going to put buying. So the Fed will control the money supply. See here, central bank has a way to control changes in the money supply. The reason that they are buying government securities is so that they can either increase or decrease the money supply. The other option is that they can, they can, They'll be selling government securities. And the reason they're selling government securities is so that they can either increase or decrease the money supply. Okay, And so the question is, how or what does buying and selling mean? Okay, well, buying and selling government securities. So we need to understand which direction the money is moving when buying or selling. Now, it's important that you understand that it's not... The, it's not you, the one who's buying or selling the, the government security. We're not talking about you buying and selling government securities with the Fed. We're saying that the Fed is buying and selling. And here's something that we need to understand. That the buyer, the buyer brings money, right? And the seller brings a product. Bring, well, in this case, let's say that the, the seller brings the bonds. So in this particular market, in open market operations, whoever the buyer is in the situation, they're bringing money, and whoever the seller is, is bringing the bonds. Now, the buyer walks away, walks away with, the bonds, and the seller walks away with money, okay? We have to remember that in general, anytime buying and selling is happening. The seller shows up with a product and then walks away 
she, oops, excuse me, walks away with money. And the seller walks away with money. Now, the buyer shows up with money and walks away with a product, okay? So, the question here is this. What does it mean to increase the money supply? Well, increasing, by the way, I'm going to put a whole bunch of notes here. Right now, I'm just using this space, so I'm sorry that, that I probably already ruined your notes. I'm about to erase all of this and put some notes under buying, and I'm also going to put some notes under selling. So I would put this stuff over on the side. I don't have enough room on my whiteboard to put just sort of tiny notes, so I'm sorry if I messed up your notes. All right, so what does it mean to increase the money supply? All right, well, increasing the money supply means that uh, money is put into, money is, uh, let's say, injected into the economy, okay? Now, when I say injected into the economy, the way that the Fed injects money into the economy is that it brings money to the economy and then puts it in the economy somehow, okay? So uh, that's an increase in the money supply. But a decrease in the money supply, okay, means that money is removed. So the Fed shows up at the, goes to the economy and takes money, removes money out of the economy. So money removed from the economy, okay? So, if the Fed is, is showing up as a buyer, they're bringing money, and when they bring money to the economy, they're gonna walk away with bonds, and they're gonna leave the money in the economy, and therefore, buying is associated with increasing the money supply. Because when the Fed buys bonds, they're going to the people in the economy and saying, give us your bonds. We'll take your bonds and then we'll give you money. And then you walk away with the money. And when all those owners, former owners of the bonds walk away with money, there's now more money in the money supply. On the other hand, the seller, if, if the Fed shows up as a seller, if the Fed is selling bonds, what they're doing is they're showing up at the economy with bonds and they're saying, hey, everybody, come buy bonds from us. Oh, by the way, to buy bonds, you're going to have to bring us some money. So people from the economy or organizations bring their money to the Fed. They give up their money. The Fed takes money gives them bonds, and now those people walk away with bonds, and the Fed keeps the money. And when the Fed keeps the money, that money is no longer in the economy, and therefore, selling is associated with a decrease in the money supply, whereas buying, when the Fed buys in open market operations, that's associated with an increase in the money supply. So, everything I just said, all I want you to understand based on what I just said is that buying government securities in the open market, when the Fed buys in the open market, the reason they are buying is because they're trying to increase the money supply. When the Fed is selling in the open market, when they sell bonds in the open market, the reason that they are selling is because they want to decrease the money supply. So. The Fed is buying in the open market to increase the money supply, and they are selling in the open market to decrease the money supply. Okay, That's the, that is the, the summary of what we're about to describe. Now the question is, how does this happen? Well, here's what happens. Under buying, what will happen is the Fed will buy securities from banks by transferring money into their reserves.
Okay, so over here, what's going to happen? When the Fed puts, transfers money into the bank's reserves, that means their excess reserves are going to increase. They're now going to have more money in their excess reserves. And because they have more money in their excess reserves, they can now loan that money out. Now understand that this is an increase. Ultimately, it's an increase in the monetary base. Okay, so now these, the banks that have sold the securities to the Fed, those banks now have more reserves. And an increase in reserves means an increase in the monetary base. Then, these extra reserves, which is now excess reserves, the banks have available that they can loan that money out. Excess reserves are lent out, triggering money creation and increasing the money supply. And so now I'm going to give you a little diagram down here. So here's what's going to happen. The Fed will buy in open market operations, OMO. That will then lead to an increase in bank reserves. And then the increase in bank reserves will lead to an increase in the monetary base and the increase in the monetary base should then lead to an increase in the money supply. And this is how the Fed, the mechanism by which the Fed uh, manipulates the money supply on a day-to-day -day basis. When the Fed does this, when they're, when they're buying in open market operations, they're doing it in much smaller effects on the money supply. The, this is not going to have gigantic uh, effects on the money supply that are going to sway the whole economy in, you know, in one or two days. These are going to be minor adjustments to the money supply to do minor adjustments to the economy. Okay. All right. So selling in the open market is basically going to have the exact opposite effect as buying in the open market. When the Fed sells in the open market, what they're going to do is they basically go to banks and they tell banks that they're going to buy. They go to the banks and they say, look, we're, we're gonna, uh, we're, you're going to buy some bonds from us and we're going to sell them to you and we're going to take your money. We're going to take money out of your reserves to pay for the bonds that we're going to give you. Okay. And so the first thing that will happen is the Fed sells securities to banks by transferring money out of their reserves. Okay. So over here, what's going to happen is the banks are going to lose maybe their excess reserves and they may even lose 
They may be down here, but they're supposed to have their required reserves up here. Now, they, they don't have their required reserves covered. So what they're going to have to do is they're going to have to pull back on lending. They can't lend out as much money. When they receive payments on their existing loans, they're going to have to put that money into their required reserves to get this number back up to what is required by the Fed. Okay, So the Fed takes money out of, their, out of the bank's reserves. The buying banks now have less in reserves, and that's a decrease in the monetary base. And so now, the decreased reserves are going to restrict lending. They're not going to be able to lend out as much. And it's going to trigger the money destruction process, which is ultimately going to lead to a decrease in the money supply. Okay, and so now I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go ahead and show you the mechanism. When the Fed wants to decrease the money supply, that's what they want to do. So they start with this in mind. They know they want to decrease the money supply, and they know that selling in the open market is going to result in a decrease in the money supply. So what they're going to do is they're going to sell securities in open market operations, that is going to lead to a decrease in bank reserves. Now banks have fewer, uh, the, the monetary base, or well, the decrease in bank reserves, uh, it leads to a decrease in the monetary base. This, remember, this is what the Fed has direct control over. And now what they're hoping will happen is that everybody will behave rationally and do what they're supposed to do and ultimately re uh, result in a decrease in the money supply, okay? And so this is one of the most basic ways that the Federal Reserve will manipulate the money supply. Uh, and like I said, this is sort of a day-to-day -day, uh, tool that they use. And what we're gonna move on to now is we're gonna move on to the tool that they use not as frequently. The next one, they only, uh, they only enact it maybe a couple times a year or a few times a year. It's called the discount rate.